Those are all dressed up and know where to go if you don't sit down. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I missed a couple of days of work last week and uh, a little, little incapacitated and uh, it gets you just out of sorts, you know? Get you out of rhythm. Getting out of your regular routine. Okay, we'll call this meeting in order if we could, please. This is the quietest I've had a fiscal court before a meeting that, that I remember. That was you, Elaine. <laughs> you kept looking around? One minute. Just one minute here. Yeah, she looked like she's dead left. What did she leave on? I was recording. I made it. Okay, call the meeting in order if we could, please. Okay, the first order of business would be the minutes from the March 20th meeting. This was mailed to the magistrates. Uh, motion to approve as presented. Mo motion by Sam Hutchins to approve as presented. Is there a second? Second by uh, Jerry Hahn. Uh, all approved, say aye. Uh -huh. Disapprove. <coughs> motion will carry. Next, uh, just for a matter of public record, uh, we're going to enter this as a matter of public record. We had a uh, signing earlier today that. Uh, that April uh, 2018 uh, would designate that actually a national designation of Child Abuse Prevention Month. I met with Neil Casa this morning at 8:30, and uh, uh, we have a very good volunteer group that that uh, guides the young people through the court systems when they have to go through the court system. Matthew's probably seen some of that. Plain, uh, if you would, just no court action necessary. It's just matter. You got a copy of it, though, please. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next order of business would be uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, the bills list. Yeah, bills. yeah. See, I had that proclamation first, but I did that first. <coughs> Thank you, Jeff. Bills list and additional bills list and transfers. Any transfers here? No transfers. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. We weren't going to let you go very far. I was kind of overlooked paying those bills, to be honest with you. Well, there's a couple of pretty good size ones in there. One, one in particular, the parochial transportation and the bridges projects. The Hugh Ice Loop Bridge project's in there. That's $125,000. And uh, let's see. So we have one transfer to the jail? That's, a, that's just a budget transfer. Okay, sorry. That's, a, that's, that's already, a, you've already approved it technically. We just put that for record. <laughs> That's more of a notification to you guys. Make a motion to pay the bills as presented. Thank you, Bernie. Transfer. You don't have it. Yeah. 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 You want to add the transfer to that? Transfer. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the transfer. Transfer. Okay. Second. Clear. All of us say aye. Disapprove. The motion will carry. Thank you, Jan. Okay, next would be the, uh, Jeff, you might want to step yeah. out on this next one. You put anything new on the wall out here for me to read? <laughs> <laughs> Last time you were out, about half an hour, 45 minutes? I went out there and took a nap back in your office. Uh, you can go back to my office there. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, we did kind of leave it in the dark, did we? Yeah, we forgot to come back. It's like he used to get the wobbly chair when we had the old chairs. You're like a pep child. Bluegrass, the network franchise agreement, technically, uh, uh, as Keith uh, pointed out to me last night, that the uh, Senate budget did not fund, did not fund further fund the uh, Kentucky Wire program, but there was money in the budget uh, at the governor's discretion that can fund whatever he wants to fund to a certain point. But that being said, I'm asking the court not today to uh, to do anything other than establish a a franchise or a telecommunications ordinance. Uh, and then, then the process would happen um, that uh, once the ordinance is passed, then we would advertise for anybody that's interested in, in coming in and doing a franchise. Correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew. Okay, and so there's no mention at all of an ordinance of any particular company. You'll look at that ordinance. There's no mention at all. So that means that we've got to, legally we've got to advertise it. 
and I'm asking the court today to establish that franchise. Any motion? I make a motion. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second, second by Bernard Ice. Discussion, Keith? I've just got a, you know, I've had issues with it all along. I hate giving up public ground for a Nelson County taxpayer. And uh, it's not that I want to stop progress in any way. You know, and if it was going to benefit a whole lot more of my constituents, I would probably be a little more at It's not going to go, it's going to go a little bit through my district, but a very little bit. And thank y'all for all your hard work that you put into this. And I hope it's, I hope it's a good adventure. Thank you. I hope they get to the bid when it comes up. Yeah. Mm. And, and there could be another company that wanted to do, you know, yeah. uh, Bluegrass has already indicated they're going to do the project, or, or they're going to try to do the project with or without themselves. Uh, because, um, number one, they're already in Nelson County in a particular, quite a few spots. Sure. Uh, motion's been made, second. All approved, say aye. Aye. Disapprove? I disapprove. Disapprove. Motion carries. One one disapproval? No. Keep no. Mm -hmm. Let me get Jeff. Motion carries. Yeah, get Jeff. Let's leave him out there another half an hour. We got <laughs> yeah. Kind of point. Yeah. We get the rest of our work there. Jerry made the motion. Jerry made the motion. Next order of business would be an order in your, that I put in your mailbox. <coughs> We've had uh, brief discussions over the last couple of uh, weeks about that. Um, whereas KRS 64-530 regulates the process for the compensation of certain uh, county officials in order to align the coroner's office with other counties, uh, with, with Nelson County's population, I'm asking the court to raise the compensation of the Nelson County coroner's all, all, uh, position to $2,000 per year for the next three years. Also in your mail, I'll put a copy of or what the current coroner is currently making. Uh, Matt, I mean, the media received a copy, uh, Jim and uh, mm -hmm. Randy, uh, previously, I think, about the uh, scale compared to the other counties. Um, and, and that would put him in more in line with the other county, him or her. And that can only be done at this time of the year, election year. No other time can, can a coroner, actually a county attorney, receive a, a raise uh, other than election year. It puts the heat on everybody and makes it uh, open to the public to, to scrutinize. But this particular raise would only take effect the next term, starting January 2019. Uh, portion of Nelson County, unfortunate in some people's eyes, that the coroner's posi uh, position in, in Nelson County is an undertaker, as in the funeral home business, like many other rural counties. That's not always going to be the case. So what I'm trying to do is set up that position in office for the professionalism to be carried forward, uh, moving forward. So I'm asking for $2,000, that's $6,000 over the next three years. Uh, that would get him more in line with the other counties our size. Discussion? Entertain a motion? I'll make a motion, Lord. To approve it? To approve? There to, yes. Is there a second? Second by Bernard Ice. Discussion? Can you explain what, what, you, what you mean by help going forward to... You may, uh, in years past, there's actually been doctors, mm -hmm. retired doctors, practicing doctors that might be interested in the office. Uh, the coroner's uh, basically a 24-hour day job. Uh, I think you might get more people mm -hmm. interested in you know, uh, a semi-retired or retired person that might be interested in doing that type of job. Uh, after they retire from another position, I don't think you'll get too many people that are a doctor or a professional or that wants to do that, you can't make a living doing it? I don't know, it has to be a part-time job. Yeah, but it is considered full-time. Because uh, if you saw the caseload, <clears throat> saw the caseload, it went, we've doubled our caseload in the last eight years. The importance of it is the main thing. Uh, you know, if you've got a loved one laying out there that, that he's called out at midnight, two or three o'clock in the morning, he has to make that determination on. It's, it's uh, just for the for the public out here at the audience today, our coroner <coughs> currently makes eleven thousand nine hundred dollars. The counties our size, which you say would be Barron County, or or uh, say Shelby, which is close to us, uh, they're in in the nineteen to twenty one thousand dollar range. <coughs> so we're about eight to ten thousand dollars under our surrounding counties. Uh, on top of that, the caseload's gone from. 
99 cases of coroner cases in 2009 to 188. Uh, that was as of uh, this past fall uh, when I did the survey. So I think that, that alone uh, helps justify the increase. <coughs> uh, I know it's been brought up in the past, but never really pushed. I just kind of wish it would have uh, maybe been brought forward before the filing deadline and stuff so the others could uh, evaluate that. As Could we, just following the statute. Yeah. 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 We still got one meeting to go, right? Yeah, one meeting to go. Yeah. 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 If you don't want to make a decision today, it's fine, but uh, I'm just thinking of the future, too. Rhonda, I've got a question. I noticed in 2016, <coughs> we bought approximately $3,500 in body bags. And then so far this year, we've only bought 1,100. So the we death rate, we we've got an outstanding invoice right now for it. Right now for it. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's on an as-needed as basis. I know, I know. And actually, <coughs> years, some years past, we've gone to the state surplus properties and got body bags there. Military body bags. Yeah, sure have on several occasions. Let, let me just also say uh, the statutes are very clear with the coroner's position. The coroner, fiscal court has to fund the coroner's office reasonable expenses. A reasonable expense could be the coroner could come to fiscal court and ask for a, for a vehicle. That would be a reasonable expense. A reasonable expense could be the, the coroner could come to the fiscal court and ask for a morgue. How would that be unreasonable? So, you know, to, to, to work with your coroner, no matter who he or she it is, uh, and, and, and uh, make sure that uh, everybody's working together, I think it's important. So the coroner can really cost the fiscal court. I'll give an example, Hardin County, or Jason County, spends $231,000 a year on coroner's office. Uh, Shelby County, I just mentioned, 61000 we spend thirty-two. Shelby <coughs> County's our size. They, uh, their budget is twice our budget. We are the lowest, but I just checked, I got tired of checking. Six counties, we are the lowest county out of the six I checked. Bullet spends 43, Barron, which is our size, uh, spends 57, almost double what we spent. I don't understand how the corner The corner's ever extra in this court to write to put blue lights on the car. You know, we give him the right to blue lights. We did that, yeah. I think it's only the extra in this court. Yeah, that's only, yeah. Which is important, he has. But, you guys want to think about it again? I have no problem with the table. So you're saying, saying. You, you would want to trade off at fifteen hundred a month or a year for for three years. That's up to the court to decide. I'm just trying three, to, but I have to amend the motion. I'm just yeah. trying to to work it in the budget on okay. a graduated basis, <coughs> so it doesn't impact the total budget at one time. Was it three years instead of four? It would be four. I was, but if I went four, it'd be, it'd be over what you guys are making, what some other counties were paying. Yeah, but the election cycle's four years, so why are we only doing it for three? That's, that's strictly up to you guys. I, I didn't want to go over what uh, what the other counties were paying, but yet I don't want to be... What's fair. What's fair. Yeah. I'm okay with it. <clears throat> Entertain a motion. We're in the middle of discussion now. I can't remember. <laughs> Who made the motion? Jerry? Jerry. 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 Two second burners. Uh, All approved, say aye. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Disapprove. Motion carries unanimous. I guess we could bring up the county attorney's pay, but he didn't ask for any increase. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little old page in there. He's our man. He's our go-to. Okay. Uh, next um, order of business would be discussion concerning the courthouse uh, roof uh, replacement. <coughs> And uh, brick, uh, I guess repairs, what, yep. like a better term. John? So we're working on a project to basically, to be two phases of the project, we're looking at the first phase to do some tuck point repairs, do some caulking repairs, and looking at sealing the brick. Um, and then in the next phase of the project, we are replacing the metal shingles upon the roof. So I put together a preliminary plan set, sent that to the Heritage Council for them to review. They should review and get the comments, hopefully this week, and hopefully get a final set of plans in the next couple weeks to bring back it. Get, get approved or replace that. What, what I really would like the court to do is authorize us when we get those to go ahead and make an advertisement. You guys still get to see what we're going to do. But I'd like to, if the court would authorize, once John gets approved from the, approved from the Heritage Council, go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and put together an ad and run the legal ad covering us on that 
and, and then we'll have, once we do the bidding process, then uh, Rhonda and I have got a couple ideas how we're going to pay for this. <coughs> we'll, we'll put formulate that and present to you guys. But technically, I would rather for you guys to go ahead and authorize us to have so We'll have that in this upcoming budget. It, it will probably uh, July 1st, but it will probably July 1st, but yeah. yeah. Since we're leaking <coughs> that, we'll speed the process up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you just want to advertise to see how many people may be interested in doing it. Bidding. Actually bidding. bidding the project. But you're not going to put a number figure on? No. Until no. No. Come back. No. Come back. I, I have an estimate, but I don't want that. For, I, I have an estimate of mine, but I don't want the bidders to know that. Right, right. Motion to approve I'm an advertising for those two projects. Motion made by Keith Metcalf. I'll second. Second by Sam Hutchins. All approved, say aye. 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 Disapproved. Motion carried. John, you've got your marching orders. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your efforts on that. You and Brad both have done, contributed, but John's taken it and ran with it. Okay, uh, next would be uh, surplus property equipment. Uh, Brad, Brad, we have the old uh, trailer at the... <coughs> the one that's highlighted yellow. Okay. The, the trailer that you guys, that we replaced... The low boy. The low boy. I didn't make you guys copy that, but you, everybody knows what That's the only thing you're getting rid of? And that and some old lumber. I have an interest in the lumber that we took out of that bridge, Keith, and brought to the, uh, what, uh, where'd you take the fairground? Not fairground. Oh, quarry. Quarry. Oh, quarry. Quarry. And out with those other rock out there. Yeah, with them good rock. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> They're aging. What, do we have I, I want to know whose project those two rock, those rock were. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, thank you. the rock. That's mine. I got okay. the trees. It's good fill material. Okay. <laughs> Just to let y'all know a little bit about these trees. I had a bridge that was built on Higdon Loop. Mm -hmm. We think it's about 110 to 20 years old. We really don't know. We know it's at least that old. They built those yeah, rock walls. Head walls. Head walls up off a timber foundation. And that timber's been underneath the water for 110 to 20 years. <coughs> and most of it's yellow poplar. And mm. I took a chainsaw and cut through one of them. It's beautiful. Mm. I just think somebody out there might need that. You know, We've actually got a couple that. people have expressed interest in it, but you know, but legally by law, we cannot dispose of anything unless we declare it surplus. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any old sheriff's vehicles, Mike, out there. Yes, other property needs. Uh, we have to strip them out, but we've got several. They can come in a different time. Okay. I want, I want to go and get this trailer. I like to get some money out of that trailer while it's. I'll probably put that trailer on that gov deals. What you say that trailer might bring? <laughs> I heard you say the seventy five hundred dollars more than strip on. It might be yeah. And a motion to uh, declare those two items surplus and advertise. Motion by Bernard Ice, second by Keith Metcalf. All approved, say aye. 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 Disapproved. The motion will carry. Thank you all. Nine one one budget, you have a copy of that in your, your mailbox, I believe so. Did you guys get a copy of that? Yes. <coughs> Uh, city approved that yet, uh, Milk? The work session. Okay. okay. You guys have, if you don't want to have it, we can we can do it next court meeting. Just uh, sometimes this month is fine then it might uh, melt. Yeah, let's do that. But make sure you bring, I'll get you uh, hard copies. I'll, sometimes I send things online, I forget. I always try to print the hard copies. I was out last week for a couple of days. <laughs> you emailed it out? Okay. It, Basically, the bu budget's fairly close to what we've done in the past, uh, a, a 50 cent or a 30 cent an hour raise for the employees mill, 30 cents an hour for the uh, dispatchers. Uh, there's a payment plan, I believe, approved for uh, paying the fiscal court back our money of about $50,000 a year for the next couple of years, several years. Um, our <coughs> fees are uh, through the uh, way we've done it now on the tax bills. Uh, has, has produced us enough revenue to be able to do that. So everything's working as planned. Uh, that's a good so part. That's a good thing. But we'll, we'll, we'll prove it next quarter meeting. I want to thank you, Milt. I haven't had the first phone call since you took over. So apparently things are working right. Or, you know, they would be burning my phone. Thank you for all you do for me. Joe, uh, EMS report? <coughs> the March report. I put the box this morning. I hope y'all know. Uh, for March, we have uh, responded to 517 calls. 106 of those are uh, non-transport. Uh, March numbers are down a little bit from years previous. That's kind of been the trend since January that uh, calls been on the little bit on decrease. 
Uh, we're sure that's short-lived, but it always has a low and then a, and a, a spike. Um, and that'd be my report for. Okay, Dorcas jail report. <coughs> I didn't put you on the agenda, by the way. I accidentally. I did this agenda about uh, last Monday or Tuesday, and I'd be gone a couple of days, and I failed to put you back on there. Okay, today we have a total of 129 inmates. We have four in Harvey County. We've got one on home incarceration. We're down to 41 state inmates. We shipped five yesterday to Franklin County and two administrative uses. Uh, still not able to get rid of any emails yet. Uh, I've talked to a couple of judges and they're having the same problem. Yeah. And if they've got medical or their high classification, no one wants them. Uh, we have four that serve in weekends. We have two out to court. So we have an in-house total today of 118. Uh, that's all I have to report. <coughs> we go to uh, recreation for report. He's, no. he's not here today. Uh, landfill solid waste, John. Uh, it's been busy as usual this time of year. Both y'all to pick up. Not quite as busy with uh, cubic yards as last year, but still pretty busy. Um, cubic yards were 3264 tons of 673 tons. A little over 3,000 tires to a total cost of 27,296. Um, what do you think, two weeks behind? Two weeks behind right now, that's what we're thinking. Did it ever quit raining and quit snow? <laughs> it's been a wet spring. It's been a wet spring. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, doing staking for the geotech testing, doing that today, and start <laughs> digging test pits tomorrow, get those done Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, get that wrapped up so they can plant corn or beans. Okay. That's all I had. Thanks, John. Road department report, Brad. All right, outside of uh, bulky item, we had that snow day on March 12th. Uh, that was the unexpected four to six inches we got, remember? Uh, yeah. Uh, and then Wednesday, we actually had, uh, on the 21st uh, of March, we had the same thing. Uh, Bernard, they have gotten the uh, water line hung on the bottom of Higdon Loop this past week. Our plan is... I mean, you actually, our plan is to try to work this Saturday and get that road back open, is our plan. Uh, assuming Mother Nature's going to work with us. It will this week. Uh, yeah, I didn't talk about it. Uh, let's talk about some hard stuff. Treetop lane. So we got a call in about a week ago on treetop about a pothole opening up. Uh, we went out and looked at it. We, we saw the pipe was, had some fatigue on it, just older. Uh, we actually put a steel plate out over the road where the pothole was formed, about a three-foot diameter pothole. Had some fatigue on it. <laughs> 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 and basically over the weekend, uh, that culvert let loose. Is passing past the Nazareth complex on the left before you get to Nazareth Farm. So basically it's a four-foot tall, 60-inch wide arch pipe that somebody back in the day put a steel pipe in. Well, steel pipes don't work real well when they age, so it's rotted out. It opened up a big crater, oh, Monday-ish. <clears throat> so we had to pull off bulky item yesterday and go uh, fix that. And the only way we fix it, guys, and it is temporary, we basically pulled the front section of the pipe out. We are lucky that the pipe broke in a joint so we could get back to where we are at. We put a 48-inch pipe in there for temporary purposes. So we got an old pipe butted up against the new pipe. There was no way to band it. They just butted up. Backfilled it, secured the road. Water will get through because there's a house nearby. That's the reason we stopped what we were doing yesterday to fix that. That will be a project, probably one of the first ones we try to get to out of bulky item. Uh, it's a 70 foot long pipe is what it'll be. I haven't even got a cost estimate on it. The issue is it's got two head walls on it. Uh, we'll have to see how we want to go back with that. So I get to make a decision which which project I ask the state to help us fund on the emergency three percent. Oh yeah, because we're not even done yet. <laughs> <laughs> one road. Remember, I heard you say one time, "Is the county road your our responsibility?" <laughs> well, let me just say this: we're going to fix them, but the state probably will only fund one. But we'll, see. we'll see. So that's one of hey, three we need to talk about. Thank the guys if they got yep. on a real quick one called. Uh, that's that's. Lee done an excellent job. Yeah, yep, they have. It was it was. Fixing to be a bad situation. It's going to be a real bad situation. What else you got, Brad? Problem number two, Woodlawn Road. That's the other problem. That's, there's one past one that. More, yeah. 
You got us. Yeah, you're, I'm thinking yeah. we've been changed. Just, just go to the second or third page of that. It's pictures. I know. Sam's saying so about two weeks ago, leaves out riding roads, sees a slide start on Woodlawn Road near, uh, what is that road, Sam? It's near Tom, uh, Thomas Lane. Thomas Lane. So it's settled about six foot in a matter of a week right off the edge of the road. And what's happening is we have a box culvert that's real old there that is failing. Water's getting through it. We've got it marked on the road. We've got the barrels up, signage. The issue with that project is, uh, if you guys remember the ones that were on the court on Keith Knob, we did one several years ago, where we placed a big culvert, you got to dig it all out, get dirt from somewhere, bring it back, and rebuild it all. I mean, it's 25 foot deep from the top of the road down. We cannot reach that with our equipment. You'll notice the second page on that is a estimate. Sam not only has that slide, you go 200 more feet up the road, He's got another 100, 150 foot long section that is sliding as well. It's about six foot now drop from the edge of the road as well. That estimate that I got together for you guys is to fix both of them with a contractor, assuming we got to haul material in from somewhere. I know it's, uh, what I gave all my copies at, $110,000, $15,000 from what I remember. Just assume one point, right. <coughs> Uh, Keep not across this right at 100. Right. Now it was a little bigger pipe, but that was seven, eight years ago. Maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Times change, money, things get more expensive. Almost the exact same project, guys, to be honest with you. That's how I came up with the idea of how we would fix it. I've already talked to a couple contractors, and that's about the only way is dig it completely out. You got to step it back, find material to bring it back in because more than likely the material you got there is not worth using. Find somewhere to put this material here. Find somewhere to put that material. Might be part of John and I. John and I's <laughs> project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Jeff. Take it out to the old rock board and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> put that other rock in. All right. So before we finish talking, we've got a third one we need to talk about. Leonard Hall. I heard the falling part. Nelson Gunn's gonna slide. You guys all familiar with Leonard Hall's issues, I'll call them. Like we've had this conversation. Oh, we were here for 12 years. <laughs> no, it ain't been no 12 years. <laughs> You're going to be shocked when I take you back through the history of it. Remember what you told me about that? I don't think so. Leonard Hall, everybody knows, is the road goes from uh, Hall Keep Us to Road 247. 247, Harris County Road, we call it. Right. Two miles. So let me take you through a history lesson real quick to of uh, Leonard Hall. May of 2006, Charlie Boone did a repair to that road where there was a logger that went in. Uh, of course, anytime you log, it affects the hillside, which caused the road to slide. Actually, the logger had paid for that, the majority of that. We came up with some money for that project, Dean, if you remember. Yes. But, but the logger, he came through. He paid for the majority of that. 2007, we fixed it again. 2008, we went back in and put 500 feet of piping in. 2011, another hole came up we fixed. In August of 2011, we had a huge slide. The whole hillside came down over the road. We had to hire somebody back in again. David Roby did that project. That was $16,000. In 2013, we went by the edge of the road and dug out eight foot deep, five foot wide. 2014 did the same thing again. 2016, 90 tons of asphalt, 30 tons of ditch scrape. Now we bring us 2018. So altogether, we're about 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars in the district. 90 tons of asphalt. What are you talking about? Here? Asphalt millings plus 30 tons of DGA. Millings are just stuff that they got from Mago to help fill in the side of the road. That was done 7/12 of 2016. Is what Jim had in the file that he did up there. It's probably just one so so small key they just fixed it and went on. All that said and done, that is minor compared to what we've done up there. That whole hillside is sliding. That one's not easy. I don't have an answer yet for this one guys. And that uh, um, refresh everybody's memory Brad here, that hill is a pretty good hill. This is not That's good. putting it politely. It's probably <laughs> alcohol. I would say from the road up to the top is probably another 150 feet up. And from the road a, down is probably two or three hundred feet. It's, down. it's a tail end of the knob. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> it's a county road. Yeah. It's got a CR number. 
Yeah. Keith well, and I met a gentleman out there, and we're mulling over options on that one. Um, I, Keith and I'll get with you and Dean afterwards or sometime about we need to find out where Rock is on that hillside. Jerry, remember how we fixed your road on Green's Chapel and Red Plain? Yeah. That's an option. If you drive the pylons in and you put cribbing in, that's dependent on how deep is rock. I mean, on the hillside, you don't know. Until we know how deep rock is, There's, it's hard to figure out the solution out. What's that project called? Oh, Jerry's, the two were about 230. That was a, a grant. That was a grant, too. State, yeah. Something like that. Grant, but partial grant. Uh, I think that might have been they, they did, uh, 80 20. It's 80 20, I think. 80 20. I think it's 80 20. That's right. Uh, is, the, is the upper side sliding too, or just correct? Above. The upper side came so you can't cross the road. If you look up the hillside, you see water coming out. <coughs> we got to get rid of that water somehow. Won't, won't the road just slide on down? Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> When the knob gets flat. I think we need to thank this one through <coughs> and make a commitment if we're going to do this. And if we're not, we can keep putting rock on them. It'll, it'll come back. You can't, on slides, keep putting rock on them. They're going to just keep sliding. Keep that way, way. just push it. And we can, and it'll come back, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll just put some more rock on it. It'll come back. Well, we'll put let's, some more rock uh, let's put all these three pro these properties right. together. We'll right. say I'll methodically uh, come up with some solutions. I mean, we're on it, guys. We're monitoring them. We've got them marked. I said, you may not like the solution. But, <laughs> you may not like the solution, but financially and... Uh, Responsibly, we'll come up with solutions. Yeah. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Anything else? Under old new business. Yeah, I don't want to beat that to death. These guys are itching already. Uh, under um, old new business, I have a resolution in your mailbox uh, concerning. You want to build those roads and get them over? No, you don't have over. I thought we had to have a court. Okay. Uh, resolution related to the sale of uh, property to Takigawa. You guys have been abreast of this for the last seven, eight months. Uh, we were waiting actually for the closing to happen. And, uh, but we need a resolution. Uh, just to refresh everybody's memory here in the public. This is 180 new jobs coming to Nelson County in the Nelson County Industrial Park. Uh, Takigawa will be making uh, packaging for the uh, pet food industry, uh, dog food, cat food, etc. They're diversified in other packaging and other places in, in Japan and we hope one day we'll, we'll be even more diversified here. Uh, the sale of the property uh, was, uh, uh, the amount was $394,000. Anybody have any questions on the resolution? I got one. How come we're, it looks like to me we're selling it to BIDC? Yeah. Uh, Where's the money go after that? Back to, back us. to back us. Back to us. Why, why are we selling it to them to buy? I'll let Matthew, he can help it. When you look under the statute, mm -hmm. you, you can transfer to a, um, the, there's only a specific, specific way a county can transfer property in one from one government entity to another, and then from, the, from there to BIDC out. If you try to transfer it directly from fiscal court, you have to put it up in bid. There's a statute related oh, to that. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And and uh, BIDC is a, another governmental entity under the law, right, right. and and they're not governed under that statute because this court's directly governed by that statute. Okay. And then the money does. If you look at the second thing, it comes right back to the general fund. The money I'll make a motion to adopt this resolution as presented. Thank you, Bernard. Oh, second. Second by Bernard. I, I mean, second by, by Sam Hutchins. I'll approve. Say aye. Aye. Okay. Disapprove. Motion will carry. I didn't think y'all had any problem with that. No, no, no. Okay. I'm not going to fix some roads. <laughs> <laughs> Western Bypass, uh, there will be a public meeting on April the 17th uh, at Thomas Nelson High School from 5 to 7 to discuss the proposed route for the uh, bi proposed bypass from uh, Kentucky 245 to US 62. Public's invited to attend. Magistrates, you have anything to report or turn? I want to thank Lee for taking care of that slide over on Woodlawn Road. Yeah. It was something that happened quick. And, yeah. I, I'm and sure he was he... on top of it every morning. Good. By, by 7 o'clock, he was already there because I was sitting there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'll make sure he knows. I appreciate it. Anything else? This time, uh, Matt, do you have anything? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Jerry 
Second by uh, Jeff. All approved, say aye. Aye. <coughs> Disapprove? Motion will carry. Thank you all. So, so